Just lift your hands right where you're at. Jesus, there is a real anointing in this place. Everyone, lift your hands. I mean, lift them up, lift them up. Oh, my. I wait on you, Jesus. I wait on you, Lord. I wait upon you. I'm not in a hurry today. I wait on you. Praise God. Praise God. Wonderful God. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful God. Thank you, Father. Reach over and take someone by the hand very quickly. Lord, I'm not sure what you're up to today. There are a lot of times that I question my, I question my involvement in a lot of things. But there is never a day that I question your presence and what you want to do. I'm not always sure and clear about that. But I am clear about one thing, God. I want your love and presence more than I want anything else. And I want our people and I want the people under the sound of my voice and our families to be clear about their walk with you. So today, God, hallelujah, grip that neighbor's hand tight. God, charge our lives and challenge us, but change us too, hallelujah. Help us to realize that change at times needs to be embraced. We live in a world that is volatile, but we need change. We need so much change. We need holy change in us. So today, God, let prayer be a priority again in our lives and build faith within us today, oh God, I pray. And may we as your people realize our great need for your presence more than our own ingenuity and skill. Lead and guide us in our footsteps. Help us to make straight paths for our feet so that the lame doesn't have to be turned away, that they will be healed. God, I'm believing for that. I'm believing for that. Sister Rachel, I want to tell you something, Shug. You're on the right path. There is no mistake with this. Your mind may be racing, but God's is steady. There is no mistake behind this. There are souls waiting on you in that country. You must put your hands on them. You must speak life into them. You must be a part of their lives because eternity, hallelujah, is there and people's souls are at stake and many are going into the abyss, but you will save them and you will save some and you will minister to the hurting and the dying and the lost and there will be those who will not go to hell because of your obedience and it is a struggle in your flesh to truly trust and obey God. I wish I could tell you that it is not but it takes faith and obedience to step out upon that that you do not know but the moment you do, hallelujah the Lord promises to be there and to do what he's claimed and what he's planned to do with your life and with what he said. So be encouraged today. 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And know that the whole armor of God is upon you. Hallelujah. And you will not fail the task. And you will succeed because of his presence and his power. Can I get an amen from someone? Clap your hands and give our God some praise. I ain't through yet. God, I got a message, but I ain't through yet. I want everybody that will put your hand right here on your heart. I pray like you told me. There are people in here today whose hearts are hurting. I mean, they are hurting. I don't know why your heart is hurting. I don't know what caused the pain. I don't know if it was a separation. I don't know if it's caused by death. I don't know if it's caused by sickness. I'm not sure. I'm unclear. But I know this. There are some hurting hearts under the sound of my voice. And we've got people missing and people on vacation, but I ain't talking to them. I'm talking to you. You are here, and you are not here by happenstance. It is not chance that you are here, and your heart is hurting. But right now, I feel like God is wanting to touch your heart with his presence. Not so much my words, but his presence. And he stopped me and he stopped this service to let you know how much he does care about you and how much he loves you and how how far he is willing to go to exercise his authority in your life and to bring you some peace, much needed peace in this service right now. Every hand on the heart right now. Heavenly Father, I do not know who all needs a heart touch today. A transplant as it was of a brand new heart. There are some hurting of hearts in here today, but I'm reminded of the words of Jesus in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Oh God, today I believe that there's peace coming right now under the sound of my voice to people that are here that are hurting and that may be confused about what area to go to next and what is happening in their life why they have been they have been treated like they have been treated why things have went like they have went have on their job in their family in a in a in another church in another ministry somewhere in a in a relationship that has gone bad some kind of way that has caused some pain and some questionableness of God's presence. Oh God you're never to be questioned when it comes to the love and care over your children. You will stop a service like this to let them know, hallelujah, that I love you and I care and I'm touching your heart now and I'm removing, hallelujah, the problems in the areas that have scars upon them that cannot be fixed by the word of men but I will touch them with my hand and I will touch and I will heal them says the spirit of the Lord and I will grant unto you peace yet once again I'm breathing my breath upon you can you feel it even now I say breathe it in breathe in joy and exhale despair breathe in my healing and exhale that thing that is causing you pain and the day when you leave here says the Lord I have freely given unto you my presence and my I love and when you leave here today you shall go forth with joy and praise and worship and renewed life saith the spirit of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah can we praise him in this room here today I mean can we praise him in this room here today somebody that got your heart fixed ought to jump up and give God some Tehillah praise. You ought to give God some Yada praise. You ought to give God some hallelujah, exuberant praise, hallelujah in this place here today. Glory to his name. 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 Turn your Bibles today. You got just a few minutes? I got all day. Acts chapter 9, turn there quickly. Wherever you've come from today, God bless you. I pray that God has already ministered to you and touched you. But I know this, our faith don't come just with 
just by talking and saying a few words of encouragement. The Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the best thing I could do for you is to stand here and proclaim to you the word of God and what God has to say. And that, my friend, along with what you're feeling in this room, will undergird your life when it feels like crumbling. And you will make it in spite of what is happening in your life. Can I get an amen from someone? Praise God. Acts chapter 9, one verse, verse 31. I know you've been sitting and standing, but I want you to stand one more time to honor God's word as it is read out loud. Chapter 9, verse 31. Whew. I love you, God. Who I feel you circulating up here on this platform. Glory to God. Verse 31. Then the churches throughout all, all of Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and were edified. Whoo. Oh, they had peace and were edified. And walking, here it is. Here's my thought. Here's what the Holy Spirit is wanting to share with us here today. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And they were multiplied. Walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. They were multiplied. You can be seated. A great danger looms over the Pentecostal church today. My brothers and my sisters, my beloved. A great danger looms as a cloud over the church today. We will not die by unexpected destruction or suddenly become institutionalized or so formal that it leaves. But two things are passing from us in very steady and slow degrees. We need a revival of them in these last days. I said we need a desperate, a desperate revival of them in these last days. Like a man with a lacerated artery in a painless place, we are slowly bleeding out as it were. We are bleeding to death steadily and slowly. I believe at times in great places of worship like that of sweet water that I can tell you that I'm proud to be the pastor here for the almost 20 years now. But I believe at times we have been cut, cut very deep. And sometimes the pain is not there, but the blood is still flowing and our lives are slipping away from us. But I want you to be aware of some things today that I feel like God, at least two things that he's put his hand on here today. And I feel both of them in this room here today. I feel both of them. Before I preach it, I feel both of them and I'm about to preach it to you. Oh, our artery may be lacerated at times and we're being cut. It feels like away from life. Only when weakness and darkness close in around us will we see the very danger that is looming over us at times. I wish I could tell you that I don't feel it at times, but I do. I can relate to Rachel's statement a while ago when she said she felt very anxious and apprehensive, oppressed, it seems like. And sometimes you ask yourself, is that just me or am I feeling something that is a that is that that I that that God is feeling over people and I'm feeling the very emotions of people and the hurt of people. Let me tell you right now, the Bible said it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And when you feel God's heart and you know what He's about, and all of a sudden you begin to feel His pain and His hurt for society and people and hurting children and ministry and homes and lives. I mean, the list is a million miles long. That could be in America. It could be in Cambodia. It could be in China. It could be on the street behind your house. But wherever it is, my God, when you feel that hurt and that compassion and that, that, that oppression that feels like 
It, it is not just upon you, but it is upon our society. God lets chosen people, I believe, his people feel that for a reason. And the reason is because he trusts us with that for a moment that we know out of that obscurity and darkness and black cloud, we will cry out with a voice that our neighbors are not crying out with, that the people in Cambodia are not crying out with, Rachel, and them in China cannot cry out with them on the back streets of America. I believe this. We're sending our sons and daughters across the, 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 the seas to these countries, I believe, that are in massive destruction and trouble, genocide. I mean murder. You would not believe sex trafficking of children is at an all-time high. Millions of Will lose their lives and no one will ever know except the God of glory but he knows can I get an amen from somewhere hallelujah in this house today let me tell you right now what we need we need some people that are, as the word of God said God said I looked for a man and I couldn't find none he said to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge hallelujah we need some gap standers hallelujah here this morning and we need some people that can get in the hedge and say I'll stand between what's going on in my community and what God is wanting to go on in my community and I'll fight the hell that's coming against it and I'll stand guard over my family, my children, and my home. Can I get a witness from somebody in here today? I'll stand guard over them and I'll build a shield of protection upon them. Hallelujah, through prayer and through the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you right now, I'm tired of people telling me that you can't claim the blood and you can't apply the blood and you can't can't, let me tell you right now it, the best thing you can do for your children is not just give them a college education but tell them about the blood of Jesus and claim the blood over their life and say devil in Jesus name I claim the blood over them hallelujah that you shed upon Calvary every drop let it touch my house let every shingle of my dwelling place drip with the blood of Jesus let the anointing of God hallelujah walk around my property hallelujah to his name keep us in the center of your will mm. we live in desperate times and there's a cloud over Pentecostal churches and every church as far as that goes in these last days oh we need desperately a revival of at least two things that I read here in this scripture this morning these two things gave the church edification and the birth of souls. You notice where it says, it, and they multiplied. That don't mean that they had bake sales and folk just come to church. It meant that they were doing something right to the point that the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, was working over time and the church was being filled with people, hallelujah, that were giving their hearts and lives to Jesus. Look at here. My sermons ain't to change your mind. My message is to change your heart and your direction and your soul's journey so that it gets back on track with God. How do anybody can change your mind? Some slick tongued man or woman can change your mind. But it takes God to change your heart and to put your soul right back in line with him hallelujah hallelujah I don't need a motivational speaker I need a prophet of God a man a woman of God somebody who's not ashamed to tell me and not afraid to tell me you gotta get right you need to get clean you need to be pure hallelujah to God he's coming back soon he's a healing God he gives hope and life where there is none Oh, yes. Don't beat around the bush with me. Tell me what I need. But we need two things that the early church had. And I'm afraid it's at a deficit in the churches today around the world, not just in America. Around the world. Would you like to know what them two things are? Here they are. The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Say that with me. The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Let's deal with fear first. How about that? Let's deal with the fear first. Can we deal with that? It is required for wisdom and knowledge. Do you know that? 
The fear of the Lord is required for wisdom and knowledge. It has to be there in order for you to receive wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, Job said in Job 28 and 28. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction, Proverbs 1 and 7. It is commanded of God. It is commanded of God. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Proverbs 3 and 7, my God. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 17 simply says, Fear God, hallelujah, to his name. It is a characteristic of spiritual men and women in the house of God and in the kingdom. Would you like to know about some of them? Glad you asked. Here they are. The Bible said Noah. Noah. Anybody ever heard of that guy? Noah. Moved, I like this, with godly fear. With godly fear. He moved with godly fear. Oh, yeah, he built the boat by faith. He built the boat by faith. He built the ark by faith. But he moved with fear. He built by faith, but moved with fear. My God, that'd be a good title to my message here today. He, he built by faith, but moved with fear. He moved with fear. Mm. Joseph possessed this godly fear. How do you know? Genesis 39 says, How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Inside of Joseph and inside of Noah, inside of the men and women in the Word of God, they had godly fear. And God used that fear for His glory. At the death of Ananias and Sapphira, great fear came upon, the Bible said, all the church, Acts 5. Listen to me. It pleases God. The Lord takes pleasure, get this, in those who fear Him, Psalm 147 and 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Are y'all with me here today? Serve the Lord with fear and would draw, rejoice with trembling. Psalm 2 and 11. God deserves, not only requires it, demands it, but He deserves our fear or respect here is the word we're looking for. Let God arise and His enemies be scattered. A panoramic view of His power is in Isaiah 40. I don't have time. But it says simply some of these things. Then the earth shook and trembled, and the foundation of the hills also quaked and was shaken because he was angry. Then everyone who trembled at the word, words of God of Israel, assembled to me, Ezra said, because of the transgression of those who had been carried away captive. And I said, astonished until evening sacrifice. Those were the words of Ezra. In other words, the fear of the Lord brought the people together. The fear of the Lord at the death of Ananias and Sapphira didn't scatter the church. On the opposite, it unified the church. It made the skeptics and the doubters and those who were on the outside say, you know what, we better get closer to get God. We better understand Him a lot better and know what He desires from our life. Come on, amen to God. We live in a world where there's no respect anymore for anybody I'm talking about just God let's just get down here to where we're at people post whatever they want to post about the president of the United States of America they say things about CEOs of company the bad thing about it is they do the same thing they post their rhetoric they say what they want to say there is a disrespecting spirit of devil worship all over this whole country are you hearing me and it's crept into the church we don't respect men and women of God no more. Am I right? I said, am I right? We don't. We, at times we call them by their first name. I've never demanded that anybody call me Pastor Napier. But let me tell you right now, before you call me just plain Philip, you better have a couple of meals with me before you call me that. Because I, I, I ain't telling you I've earned the right, but I know this, God put me here, and I, I didn't do anything about that. He, he just placed me here. So before before you say Philip, you might want to say pastor in front of that, or you may have to talk to him about that later. I, I don't know. I'm not telling you for me, but all I'm saying is this. We have lost respect 
for everyone on our jobs. We don't respect our bosses. On our jobs, we rebel. We can say what we want to. We want to do our own thing. We say these words. Boy, if I ever get to be a crew leader or if I ever get to be a boss, I'll do things different. No, you won't. You'll be just like them and they'll talk about you just like they talk about them. Are you with me? Say amen. I'm going to tell you right now what we need again in the church is a building of respect not only for God but for each other. I'm talking about for each other. And the reason we don't respect one another is because I dare say we've lost our respect for God and God Almighty himself. Let me tell you something else. Now you're going to get mad at me. You probably may not like what I'm about to say. But let me tell you something that's in me. And I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like I'm, I was up to here but I'm over here now. But 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 here's the thing. We we come to church any kind of way. We're not on time. We we you, you know here's the deal. How many folk got a got when you work did, did they tell you to be there on time? What if you show up an hour late for your work? What they do? I need some help. I'm preaching. What do they do? They they send you to the gate. Am I right? Then you do this. My tire was flat. My cat got loose. My youngest was crying. Breakfast burned. Everything happened that happened. You know what they say? Tell it to the human resources person. You go into the gate. They only give you a paycheck that's here one on Friday and gone by Sunday. And you mean to tell me at times we can't be punctual for a God that's promised to love us and keep us and supply our every need? I know y'all ain't going to shout me down, but I'm preaching good. We late. We don't come to class on Wednesday night. Hello. I got one better than that. Some don't come unless they teach it. It's quiet in the house today. No respect. Well, I can't go in that class because I, I don't like them. I don't come to Wednesday night class because blah, 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 blah. No respect. I didn't say you had to like everything about people. But when people are in a position and in authority, that itself has to have an amount of respect. But I ain't talking about people just this morning. Maybe I'll just say, maybe do that sermon two. Sermon one is, we treat God We treat God like he's a schoolyard friend. Come on, God, let's go. Who are you to tell God, come on, let's go? Why don't we say something like, God, what do you want today? Who would you like to go today? Not come on and get involved in my life. What can I do to get involved in what you are doing? God asked me a question up here some years ago. I still got it wrote down in my Bible. Some years ago, I, 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 and I'm not even sure where it came from. We was thinking about creating, starting a homeless ministry downtown. And I remember, man, everybody's gung-ho. They come to my office. They had a plan together. We can do this, this. And man, it looked all good. I bought into it. Hook, line, and sinker. Man, they had me by the job. I'm like, yeah, man, that's awesome. We can touch somebody's life and bless them. And hey, that's all good. 
And I was sitting up here that morning and I was fixing to announce all that to everybody. Man, we fixing to start a ministry. And everybody decided. I was excited. I'm like, man, we, we mean, uh, in spite of, and, and, and on top of what we got going on, we gonna do something else to touch some people's lives. Hallelujah to God. I mean, that all sounds good. Am I right? Don't that sound godly? Don't that sound like the heart of God? And I was sitting right there, right before I was to walk up here and announce that. And the Holy Ghost spoke so loud in my heart, I felt like people on the front row heard him. He said, why do you keep asking me? He said it just like that, loud. He said, why do you keep asking me to bless what you're doing? And I said, well, ain't that how we supposed to do it before we do it? He said, why don't you do what I'm blessing? And I said, hold on a minute, what you doing? He said, I already got people downtown feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and giving coats out in the wintertime and bag lunches. I said, what are you trying to tell me? He said, why do you feel like you got to reinvent the wheel every time you want to do ministry? Boy, it's quiet, ain't it? It's because we like the credit. We don't like to share that. Respect. So you know what I did? I said, uh -uh, we ain't going there. We ain't going to start nothing that's already been started. They don't need just another. They need some finances poured into what they God gave them as a vision. Sometimes God ain't asking you to invent something. He, just, he don't ask you to go to Cambodia. He just needs you to find a Rachel that's on her way there and to fund it and to give it and to send to her. Because guess what? When she's there, she's not representing just herself. She's representing every person that, that donated and every person that sold in to her life she's representing sweet water but greater than that she's representing Jesus Christ hallelujah to his name so with her being there I'm there with her being there you're there with her being there Jesus is there praise God why don't you do what I'm blessing and I learned then, look at here, let's don't reinvent nothing. If it's happening, let's find somewhere we can pour some finances in it and make someone's life better that is already engaged in that. Fear. The fear of God. Respect for God. Respect for His ideas, His, His Word. It is slipping away. We're too comfortable in God's house at times. We do too many things rashly before we think about them. Come on. Are y'all with me? Now, I'm not saying this is every case. But when God is moving, I know we've had people get up since I'm, I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get in trouble with the people that's got up after since I've said before I say this, I'm going to get in trouble with the people that's got up in this service. This is not a direct thing to anyone that's got up out of your seat and left this service for whatever reason. But here's the thing. It is amazing to me when the Holy Ghost gets to moving and the Word of God starts being pumped through the audience. Your bladder has to move. You feel the itch to do something. Go somewhere. Check on it. Your phone buzzes. By the way, please cut your cell phones off while you are in here. It buzzes. We feel the need to get up. The whole concept is if the President of the United States, if he was up here talking, they would be security in this church. And when you got up to go to the bathroom, one of them agents would say, sit yourself back down. And you'd say, why? And they'd say, because that thing on my side don't shoot caps. And you'd say, yes, sir. 
And you'd sit right back down. Let me tell you, if we will give respect to men, how much more should we give to a heavenly father that by the way says that our very breath is in his hands. It's in his hands. He can take life and give life. He promotes and tears down. But I dare say because of a society that has blasphemed his name. I'm telling you, we live in a society that hates God Almighty. They despise him. Over in Evans, Georgia right now, and I don't mind going on, I don't mind going on public with this. Over in Evans, Georgia, you got a group that says, don't put in God we trust on the back of our police car and the back of our ambulances and fire trucks. My thing is, and they showed the feet of them people the other night on TV. They didn't want to be. I'm like, look at here. You, you big enough to run your mouth. Shove that camera in your face. If you big enough to say, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God, then do it. Then, then tell me about it. Take a picture of yourself. Put it in the Augusta Chronicle. But I'm big enough, hallelujah to God, to tell you this, that there is a God and he will be respected and revered, and revered, hallelujah. He will be worshiped and he has a son named Jesus. And guess what? Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You may not bow now, but one day, my God, you will, you shall bow. No respect. Put signs upon our interstate. Tell you that God is not real. That Put one up on I-20. Y'all seen that? Yeah, some atheist group put a sign up on the I-20 that God is not, he's not real, he's, he's a, basically a figment of our imagination. Put some, they, they worded it a little different, a little slick, it's on the news. Put it up there. I thought to myself, I'm thinking to spend some money from Sweetwater right here. I'm thinking to rent the sign right beside it that says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Period. Check that out. I didn't call you that, but this book showed sure it. Because it takes an idiot to believe that God ain't real. Hallelujah to God. When you look around and you see the signs of the time, and all that is happening in our world, there is a disrespect for God all around society. But let me tell you, I really believe that a lot of that has fell into the lap of a church that they themselves have become disrespectful of God. And we have not lived what we have preached. And we have not lived what we have said. And our co-workers that we have asked to come to church has questioned our very lifestyle saying words like if that's what church is about I don't want to go because my life don't need no more chaos in it than what I'm hearing coming out of that church and hey let me tell you social media will take something bad and run with it and when one church goes out man they everybody gets on it well I knew it was going to happen well I told you it was going to happen they liars all over the church they backbiting over here and everybody that's reading that is getting an idea that the church is some this little old thing down here that, that's got cancer and problems and issues and the God that we claim ain't able to take care of her. But I'm here to tell you there is a church. I said there is a church. It ain't got nothing to do with the building only. But it's got everything to do with the people of God. God, I feel the Holy Ghost on me around the world. And Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Because of our own doings at times, preachers sleeping around. Let's just get on the preachers. I live all, I'll leave the rest of y'all alone. Teachers, councilmen, choir members. I'll give all y'all a break today. I'll just talk about preachers because I'm qualified to talk about one of them because I am one. 
But I'm so tired of hearing out about preachers who don't want to live right, who run off with the organ player. My organ player is my sister. That would be really twisted. <laughs> Running off with the Sunday school, whatever. Running off with this one, taking this, taking that. I'm so tired of that. And all it's doing is driving a bigger wedge in between us and the harvest that is in the world. Are you with me? Say amen. And I'm telling you right now, when the fear of the Lord comes back into our lives again and we begin to respect God and respect each other, do what's right, do what's pure, and do what's holy, you won't have to put a sign out on the road that says revival is here. Somebody will hear about it and say, I need a life change. I need a heart change. I need my family involved in that. I need to get in something that's right and real and pure. Hallelujah. Not only did they... Not only did they, not only did they need this fear of the Lord, they needed the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not optional. It's a scriptural requirement. You need it. Well, I'm saved and I got the Spirit. You do. One man said, well... Man, I'm gonna get some. <laughs> I'm gonna get some stuff on this. Well, I'm saved. It's all right. I'll go to you. Right, you go to heaven. But if you're gonna live one, if you're gonna live thirty minutes after you get saved in this world, you better get the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your life because that devil is going to try to tear everything in your life slam apart let me tell you something by the way even with the holy ghost have anybody figured out that it is tough with the holy ghost living and being obedient and moving forward and going doing what's right and always making the right choices hello can i get an amen have you noticed what would life be for you if you didn't have the baptism of the holy ghost let me just ask y'all that. Where would you be without that baptism? I'd be in jail. I tell you that right now. Because if some of them folk cut me off, I'd get road rage, follow them down to the supermarket. When they got out, pow. Six o'clock news, local preacher knocks man out in Kroger parking lot for cutting him off at a spot to park. And I could say the reason I done that is because I ain't got the Holy Ghost. Because if I had the Holy Ghost, he'd probably say, you better stay out that parking lot or you're going to get in trouble not with the Lord only, but with God. Respect, fear, respect, respect. Are y'all with me? Say amen. See, here's the deal. God don't keep you from doing crazy things just because you might wind up in the Augusta Chronicle. He keeps you from doing crazy things because you might wind up in hell if you ain't cl- if you if you don't realize that. He can count as my least problem. When you get God on on the wrong side, you got problems. I respect this gone. Somebody said, move on from that preacher that rung that turn up out. There ain't no more blood in there. I got you. I'm, I'm with you. No respect. Fear God. Everybody with me? Come on time. Come to class. Be at prayer. Come to church. Get your gas on Saturday. Don't stop on Sunday morning. You're late. Come here. Get in here. Don't leave early. You leave early, you might miss what you need. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah to God. Hmm. Y'all go to amusement. How many go to amusement park? How many ever been? Carowin, Six Flags. You go in, let me tell you. You don't ride them boogers. So they tell you this line is no longer taken people for this ride. You know what we do? We want to get our money's worth. And if they close the gate at 10, oh my, what are y'all talking about? I want to stay up to 12. 
The bottom line is we want, we, we'll do what we want to do. And if I run over a little bit, oh my God. Come on, bring it. Bring it. Yeah, man, he don't know. I got to dig some wigglers before I get out of here. I go fishing Monday morning with my friend. He don't know I got to get some gas and that thing. You know, I'm, I mean, I got to get ready. I mean, I got my whole week. Your week ain't nothing if you don't start it here. It is here that you start your best time and your best week. Sure, I run over. Sure, I didn't know. I didn't take the class on being letting people out early. I didn't take that class. I cut that class. If I'd have went to Bible college, they'd have had a class on how to preach for 31 and a half minutes. I would have skipped that class on purpose. Because here's the thing. I bet you when Jesus was standing on the, at the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 and he was preaching to unknown thousands that were there and them hungry eyes was looking at him. Maybe everybody wasn't getting what he was saying. I'm not telling you that everybody in here gets what I say or likes what I say at times. But let me tell you right now, all I got to find is a half a dozen or so that little old hungry eyes are looking at me saying, Preacher, you got to tell me something because I'm fighting the devil. You got to tell me something because I got a child that ain't doing right. You got to tell me something because my marriage ain't working right. You got to tell me something because I'm hurting in my body. You got to tell me. Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you. Even if I make the rest of them mad, I'm going to tell you how to do you. Watch 20 more minutes if you walk out of here without that cancer, Josh. Watch 20 more minutes if we walk out of here and, and our troubles are gone. Watch 20 more minutes if we walk out of here and our lives have been transformed. We'll stay all night long at an amusement park for a ride that don't last and a thrill that don't last long at all. But when God wants to take us somewhere, we question it. Come on, somebody. John 20, 22, Jesus said these words, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And he breathed. I like this. And he breathed. And he breathed. And he. I don't make it a habit to breathe on folk. Another preacher coined that one. But Jesus breathed on them. Am I right? Did he breathe? Then what he said? He said, receive you the Holy Ghost. And he breathed. I know you don't care, but I'm just going to breathe on you. Can I do that? <laughs> what did you feel? The Felt the breath. What did it do to you? I mean, what was the effect of it? I mean, what did, what did you, did you feel it on your face? Did you feel it in your hair? Did you, did you feel it? I mean, did you feel it? Did you feel it? He breathed on them. He breathed on them. Here's the thing. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one place and with one accord. And suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, somebody shout suddenly, <laughs> the Holy Spirit filled the house as of a Russian mighty what? As a Russian mighty what? Listen, I believe when that wind came upon them in the upper room, you know what I believe? I believe they thought back to what Jesus done for them. And they say, you know what? The same thing I felt when he breathed on me just came in the upper room. I feel his breath up in this house. I feel that baptized. I feel that Holy Ghost power running around in this upper room here today. 
Touch your neighbor and say, you need his wind in your life. You need his breath breathed on you. You need the Holy Ghost in your life. Behold. He said, behold, I send the promise, the promise, the promise, the promise. Before it's power, it is a promise. Before you get power, you got a promise. Hallelujah. I didn't know about speaking in tongues. I didn't know about the power he's going to give me, but I found out it was a promise, a promise, a promise, a promise, a promise. Y'all ain't helping me a promise a promise behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power before you get power you got to believe the promise before you can receive power, you got to know that there is a promise. And I'm reminded of what they said that day when the Holy Spirit came and they staggered out like drunk men and women. And they said, well, mighty early for the liquor store to be open here today. And they said, these are not drunk with wine as you suppose. But this is that. This is that. This is, oh, I feel like shouting. This is that that was promised by the prophet Joel. You know what he said. Let me tell you right now. Oh, my God, we need the breath of God upon us again. We need to fear the Lord and walk in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the comfort of the Holy Ghost in our life. Hallelujah to his name. Oh, the Apostle Paul said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians, he says it again to the church at Ephesus in 5 and 18. Be filled with the Spirit. No one can comfort like the Holy Ghost. He never leaves. Huh? And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Oh, he teaches spiritual things to us. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you I like this, all things. He convicts lest we stray. When he is come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and he also defends us. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Oh yeah, you need to walk in the comfort of the Holy Ghost and in the fear of God. He gives joy and the joy, who oh, and this joy, and this joy is the joy of the Lord, and it is our strength. Somebody shout, it's my strength. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink. It's not hot dogs and cokes. It's not any of that. But righteousness and peace, I like this, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Whoo. There ain't no fellowship like a Holy Ghost fellowship. I've been to some hot dog fellowships and it turned into a Holy Ghost fellowship. We forgot about the hot dogs and we started focusing on the Holy Ghost. And the next thing you know, we didn't care if we eat hot dogs or not because we was eating food that no one knew about except Jesus. In your presence is fullness, fullness of joy. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Stand on your feet. Come on, stand up. I'm through. God, we need the Holy Ghost. We need the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Am I right, Brother Carl? You need that kind of Holy Ghost that you don't speak in tongues just in church. You need the kind that will make you talk in tongues in your Chevrolet, your Ford, and your Dodge. 
That kind when you're standing in a line of Kroger, all of a sudden you feel something hit your backbone and rise up and it ain't some devil and it ain't some attendant at Walmart or at Kroger. It's that good Holy Ghost and all of a sudden for you can realize what you do and you say in Hondabu Shalom Akondabu Sai. Hallelujah to his name. Let me tell you right now, I don't know where I'd be without the good Holy Ghost. One man told me when the Holy Ghost comes on me, there ain't no telling what I'll do. I said, son, that's a lie. I said, it ain't no telling what I'll be able to do before the Holy Ghost comes on me. I said, but once he comes on me, I know what's going to happen then. I'm going to do the will of God. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get healed. Somebody's going to get saved and touched and delivered when that Holy Ghost comes and touches our lives. Lift your hands and say, thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord. All right. Now, if we're going to preach about it, we got to participate in it. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to participate. And you may get, they may get mad at you when you tell them this, but go ahead. You got to quit spectating and start participating. This is what we're going to do. We're going to ask God to deposit in us another, another deposit of that good fear of the Lord and respect for him, his glory, his name, his kingdom, his house, and all that he does. And in that, respect for each other. And not only that, a good infilling and overflowing of the Holy Ghost power so we can walk in its comfort in the days where we need it the most. Hallelujah to God. Will we, can, can, can you pray with me? I'm going to pray with you, not just for you you but with you you got to tell him yourself pray with me right now heavenly father i'm asking you to give us another depositing inside of our lives of what it means to respect you and what it means to fear you our world doesn't have that any longer but oh let it not be said another day that the church don't love you and the church don't respect you and the sweet water church of god don't honor you never let it be heard one time among us that we have lost our respect for almighty God. Never let it be said one time that Pastor Napier don't respect God no more or what he does. Never let it come out of a man or woman's lips in this city that Sweetwater Church of God has thrown respect for God and men down upon the ground. Oh no, let it be said that we still love you and we still respect you and we still fear you because you're a God and beside you there is